Well, if you don't know what it's for, you better keep your fingers out of there. Technology never works, does it? Well, I mean, sometimes it does. And when most of the time it does work, you're fine. But that one time that it doesn't work, boy, it never works. Today, we're gonna go through some of the networking troubleshooting steps that will help you figure out why stuff isn't working and why you can't connect to your favorite websites. A spoiler alert, if you know about turn it off and turn it on again, you're far ahead of this class, uh, but we'll help flush that out a little bit further. So grab your notebook, school's in session. Okay, so your network might not have all of these devices involved in it, so let's start at the very beginning. For the purposes of our demonstration, this is going to represent our internet line that comes in. Many people in the simplest setups will have just an all-in-one wireless access point switch, modem, and router all together, and that's what this... Now, this is from a long time ago, but uh, that'll be fine. Um, okay, so we've got our internet coming into our modem. We're not even going to deal with Wi-Fi. Our modem then acts as a router that um, will give us internet to the devices within our network. And in this case, our network is going to consist strictly of our one computer. So this is about the simplest network that we can get. Internet comes to modem, router works, and connects to the computer. So we're browsing around, we're doing our work, everything's going hunky-dory, and then all of a sudden, everything grinds to a screeching halt. What's gone wrong? Okay, so in this scenario, your best troubleshooting step is turn off the modem, turn it back on, see if it restores service. Uh, there's so few pieces in this puzzle that really that's what's gonna do it. If that doesn't work, your next step is to turn your computer off and on again. Because those are the only two pieces in the puzzle, they should configure themselves automatically and fall back in place. Everything should start to work. So the next step in complexity in a network here is when your modem and router are actually working as a Wi-Fi access point as well. And now we have uh, another computer that's connecting to the internet or your network through Wi-Fi. This gives us an extra piece of information. So if on our desktop our work stops and won't connect anymore and we've ground to a halt but our laptop is still able to work, now we actually, instead of restarting the modem, probably should restart our computer because out of the two, the common piece that's working is the modem, the router, the Wi-Fi access point. Uh, if it's still functioning correctly, probably your desktop is the one that needs to be reset. So after resetting that, and uh, if we still have problems, then we have to dig further into the service, probably on the desktop, not on the modem itself. If the issue is the laptop is ground to the halt, but the computer's still uh, ticking along, chugging along, doing all the work, just tickety-boo, our troubleshooting step is going to be to restart the laptop because we know we have internet access, but the added level of complexity is that it might be the wireless access that's um, actually gummed up and not working. The troubleshooting step there is still the same. It's an all-in-one device. We restart the one device. We're gonna restart all the services all together, but hopefully it'll restore service. So the next device we're gonna add into our network here is a third-party router Wi-Fi access point. What we're doing here is we're going to, instead of connecting our computer and our devices to the internet service provider's modem, we're going to connect them to a third-party router, and then we're gonna connect the router to our modem. Why would we do this? What's the benefit of this? The routing capabilities of a third-party router are going to be significantly more complex and fully functioned than what comes in an all-in-one device. So we can control the firewall and the access. We can configure a lot of the different services more granularly into our specifications. And the Wi-Fi access points that are built into router Wi-Fi access points are generally of better quality uh, than the ones that are in an all-in-one. Generally, the more you parse out the individual functions into their own appliances, the better quality service you get from those individual pieces. Troubleshooting steps here, very similar, but a little bit different. If, for example, we've lost internet connection on our desktop, we've lost internet connection on our laptop, but they're still able to see each other on the network, we know that probably our router is still working okay because the, the services are still talking between them. What the whole system has lost is this part right here to the internet. So we start with resetting or restarting our modem. 
uh, and seeing if that solves the problem. Okay, so one of the biggest issues with Wi-Fi in homes today is that the, the DMARC location where your modem and router are mounted are often right beside the furnace and almost enclosed in your HVAC tin that's surrounding it, which works as a fantastic Faraday cage, blocking all Wi-Fi from getting anywhere more than three feet away from your furnace. And since most of you don't sit three feet from your furnace and use your computers uh, to access your Wi-Fi, the option there is to get a discrete Wi-Fi access point and install the Wi-Fi service in your house somewhere on the main floor, on the second floor, uh, you can actually install multiple access points. But the point of the matter is that you're going to get your Wi-Fi radio away from um, all of that Wi-Fi blocking tin, and you're going to get better service through the rest of your house. Now we're gonna fold down these little antenna here to signify that our router is no longer serving up Wi-Fi. It's all coming from our Wi-Fi access point. So now we've got uh, our internet service provider modem, which brings the internet in, passes it unfiltered to your router, which acts as a firewall, which secures your internal network. We've got a cable going to uh, the Wi-Fi access point that's actually going to broadcast your Wi-Fi wireless network to the rest of your house so that wireless devices can connect to it. And we've got wired devices on the network as well. When things start to go wrong here, now we can start to really pull on any number of devices. Okay, so if the solution is turn it off and on again, which device do we turn off and on? We can make an intelligent decision so that probably the first device we try will get us back up and running and playing Candy Crush in no time. So our first scenario is we're working away on our laptop and everything's going great and all of a sudden we can't seem to connect to our online meeting anymore. First thing to check, of course, is are we still connected to the Wi-Fi network? If we're still connected to the Wi-Fi network, another handy tool is you check your phone. Is your phone connected to the Wi-Fi network? If it is, we understand that we're probably connected fine to the network. The Wi-Fi access point probably doesn't need to be rebooted. If, however, we're not connected anymore, or we're uh, not able to see other devices from our laptop on the network, if we restart our access point, that's probably gonna be the best option to get things back on track quickly. In a scenario, however, if I've still got Wi-Fi connection with my computer, but I can't see other devices on the network, reboot the router, restore networking within the network, and double check that we still have access outside. So if our Wi-Fi conks out on our laptop, but a wired computer on the network still has internet access, we don't need to reboot our modem because we've got internet access to the house. We don't need to reboot our router because we've still got internet access to the wired devices. It's probably our wireless access point that's the guilty culprit. Reboot that, everything should be falling back in line. Say we lose internet access on our laptop. We go to our computer to check, okay, do we have internet access on our wired computer that's on the network? We don't have internet access there either. Now it's either a router, modem, okay, no problem. Can the computers see each other or printer on the network? Things like that. If yes, probably not our router because our networking is still up and running and talking to each other. Reboot the modem, should fall back in line. If they can't see each other, we know that this is definitely a problem. Reboot our, our router, hopefully we all connect back together and get back on with our day. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an understanding of basic network troubleshooting when there's multiple devices involved. Now let's dive a little bit into what specifically we're doing when we're rebooting these devices. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when you're uh, surfing the internet, working on presentations. That's your computer. In order to get Google, there's a number of things that have to happen here. First things first, your computer has an IP address. 192.168.0.0. Four. So that's its address, that's where it lives on your internal network within your home. And it has to go then, your computer has to talk to your firewall or router. That's your firewall, that's what keeps everything nice and safe and secure inside your network. And your router has an IP address on the network. 192.168.0.0. We'll say one. And your firewall talks to, this is the internationally accepted uh, symbol for internet. Your router has a public IP address. So it will have an IP address of uh, something like this 42.8. So our router has an internal IP and an external IP. This is the IP that it's known by inside your network on your LAN. 
This is the IP address that it's known by on the World Wide Web. Now, where do these IP addresses come from? So your router's IP address is gonna be uh, configured within the router, and the router is gonna run a service called DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which means that it's going to hand out IP addresses to everything on your network. So when your computer boots up, it goes, hey, is anything on my network a DHCP server? And your router says, yep, I am. You can have the IP address 192.168.0.4. And so that what that's what your computer will be known as on the network. On the network, uh, you don't want to just talk to other computers on your network. You actually want to talk to things out in the World Wide Web. So you might want to go to Google, for example. But the internet also runs on IP addresses. Google. And Google's IP address is 142.250.217.78. If you don't believe me, you can put that into your browser, hit enter, and see what comes up. How does your computer know to go and talk to that IP address? Well, your computer will ask for Google, and your router knows where Google is because your router is running a DNS server or domain name system server. DNS changes domains or things like google.com into their IP addresses because it looks up in a registry distributed throughout the internet and will have that reference to it. So uh, your router says, I know where this is. I want 142.250.217.78. Goes out, knows exactly where to find it. The internet sends that back. Router says, here's Google. Computer shows you Google. So understanding that this is the process that's happening as you're working online uh, and retrieving uh, information from the internet, there are a couple of more troubleshooting steps that are available to you now. If you open up a terminal command and enter the command ping space google.com, what your computer will do will it'll show you in the terminal, okay, I want to contact Google and see if it, Google responds back to me. So the first thing you're going to see is a message saying pinging 142.250.217.78. Uh, and it, then it'll tell you Google responded within this many milliseconds. And it'll run that four or six times and then say everything's okay. That's how things are supposed to work. Now, if you type that into your terminal, and instead it responds with a message something like host unreachable, uh, now we know something in our network here is not configured correctly. Or at the router, it's not configured correctly. So if we can start to get things that aren't as we expect, we can start looking into the configuration of our network adapter on our computer. So for example, we can go to where our DNS is configured and our DHCP, and we can check to make sure that we have a valid IP address on our network so we can see the status and it'll show what our current IP address is and we should recognize that if we know anything about our, our network. Then we can enter in manual DNS servers. So for example, if we put in Cloudflare or 1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 for our DNS and we go back and we try our ping command again, if suddenly it starts working, we know the DNS in our network is the culprit and it's not responding correctly. Um, if we see an IP address that starts with 169, this is a magic uh, reserved number that starts IP addresses that are self-assigned. This means your computer asked the network for an IP address and no device on the network responded with a valid response. So your computer just went, okay, I'll make one up myself and started with 169 dot something, 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 something. Um, if we see a 169 IP address, we know our DHCP server is either not connected to the network or frozen up. Now, the configuration drawing that we have here is where our router is handling all of these services. But if they're uh, handled over different devices, this will help you narrow down which device needs to be restarted. In most cases, it's gonna be your router that uh, if your DHCP or your DNS are not working properly. However, 
if your uh, computer looks like it's all configured correctly and DNS is responding within your router, it's going to be your modem that needs to be reset and uh, possibly you may have to make the dreaded call to your internet service provider and wait on hold for the three hours till they decide to get to you. So hopefully this gives you a couple more tools to help you understand what's going on in the network and what's going wrong when things aren't working right. So while most of the time the solution is still going to be turning things off and on again, now you understand what's happening when you do that, and knowing is half the battle. Well, if you don't want to know what... <laughs> the most basic setup that will have... Oh, crap. Okay, so the... <laughs> Do you know the speed limits are going down to 40 kilometers now? We're trying to make a video here. Now I'm out of ideas. Did I have something to say after that? And since most of you don't sit three feet from your for furnace... forms, Just remember, the more you know... No, cut before that. <laughs>